again the solution is in the top right corner in case you want to double check and for this problem we have a fixed pile of steel cylinder A so this A is MA and 10 pile wooden cart B so this B the whole thing is B and 10 pile at rest the position so it's initially at rest the initial translational well both the translational and rotational the initial kinetic energy will be zero um, and so the slight inertia A is going to start moving down here um, this slight inertia is slight so you shouldn't take that into account we won't care about that so I think it's a row without sliding so with that that's pretty important let me underline that without sliding so that's rolling uh, without flipping along the top surface of the cart so here's the here relaxing friction between the cart and the graph so friction down here doesn't matter but you must have friction up here because it's rolling without slipping so that must be friction determine the velocity of the cart as the cylinder passes through the lowest point of the surface C so at when A is at C what's the velocity of the cart B in this problem is not mathematically tricky the main the main problem is conceptually and so my extra problem with this is the unit it's not an SI unit it's an inch this is an inch this is in pow I don't know what's g in feet per second I have to roll it down here um, and then I converted inch into feet and well, I'm not very familiar with this unit I prefer SI but for this problem again solve it because they cancel out mostly so in that case, um, like normally when I first solve this, I just go ahead and construct t plus u equal t, right? And then I solve them all the way down, and then I see the variable I don't know, and then I go back and I do um, mv the linear linear momentum conservation, and I go back and I do rotating vector, right? or r equal r plus omega or e r right and so from doing that i know the order of how to do this but if it's your first time you're likely to start with t plus u equal t right? but anyways uh, for this problem so just just letting you know how how why do i start the problem from linear momentum conservation it's, it's pretty random but I start with linear momentum conservation um, so linear momentum conservation why is this conserved that's a good question I think Yvonne asked me this like 10 times <laughs> but that's a good question um, in the x direction by the way the condition for linear momentum conservation is you don't have external force right you remember f right? linear momentum is mv you take the river of it it's going to be uh, ma and then a is f so external force if the derivative is zero then mv is constant right? you can see and so that's that's the point of linear momentum conservation but why is it in x direction and not in y direction in y direction you have external force you have gravity down so you have the normal force up that's all depend on your defined system so my system is going to be b and a that's going to be my system so the gravitational force is from the earth earth is not in my system so that's external the normal force is also from ground and ground is not in my system so it's also external but we do have external y direction force and so you, you don't have linear momentum conservation in y direction but in x direction in the horizontal direction you don't have any external force uh, you do have force in the x direction apparently like this normal force here and this normal force here 
they do have component in the x direction, but the thing is, they're not external, they're internal force. And so because they're internal, you don't really care. You only care about external force that make the you know, momentum conservation doesn't work. So that's that's the reason you you know you have friction here, you have the normal force here, but they're internal, so it doesn't affect the linear momentum conservation. And that's the main reason for linear momentum conservation in the x direction. We're gonna have uh, so the initial velocity above the object is zero, so that's zero equal to the final momentum. So it's gonna be m a v a plus, well in this case, um, I'm going to solve it, let's see, explicitly, so I'm supposed to explain this, but the concept of solving implicit or explicit, so when you solve a problem, you can either solve it um, implicit or explicit, so in implicit, um, you don't know the direction, right? So the direction, but so when you solve for it, it, you just assume like this direction is positive. And when you solve for it, if you get a positive number, then it's going this way. If you get negative number, it's going this way. By explicit, you do know the direction of the object, and you only solve for the magnitude because you knew the direction already. So in this case, I'm going to solve. It, uh, explicitly because I knew the direction already. So your MA is going to go this way already. And just intuitively, because of conservation of linear momentum, B has to go this way right, to make sure the, the if you add up two momentum, it's going to be zero. So in that case, maybe it's going to the right, so it's going to be a minus MB, VP. And notice VP is what we interested in that's what we're going to be solving for and for that reason i'm going to write va in terms of vb so you just move it to the right side ma va equal mb vb that's going to be va is going to be mb vb over ma yeah. and i write this because later on in the T1 plus U equal T2. I'm going to have kinetic energy, and it's going to be something like 1 half mVA square. And I can plug this into that VA square. And when I plug it in, uh, it's again left with a variable VB, right? And I can solve for that VB. So that's, that's the reason why I'm doing this. And then we have also notice uh, MB and MA cancel out. Right at the top and bottom, the unit cancel out. So that's good. I don't have to deal with the unit. Um, well, we don't have to deal with the unit in the exam anyway, so that, that's not so good. And B is 10. And then 6 VB. So the 2 is going to be 5 or 3 VB. Okay, so that's, that's a good relationship to know. We're going to use it later. The next thing we're going to do is the um, rotating vector. So let's say at this point, okay, that's a little big. But anyways, at this point, I'm going to create a vector from here to here. And I'm going to analyze um, this rotating vector. So this is B, this is A. And I'm going to go ahead and analyze those rotating vectors to get the omega rotating vector. So why, why am I doing rotating vectors, right? I'm trying to solve for omega in a relationship of VB, like f of VB kind of. And then once I'm solving for omega, I can plug it in again, if you remember, T1 plus U equal T2. And in some way in T2, you're going to have like 1 half I omega square. And I can plug this omega in. And it's going to be like 1 half I something something and then VB square. And I'm going to laugh with VB and then solve with VB and I'm done with the problem. So that's the motivation. Again, everything starts from this equation. So like just 
you know where the origin came from um get okay, now look at this rotating vectors we have r a equal r b plus r are we given r we are given r no we're not given r it's fine because it cancel out at the end i think so r times b b to a take the derivative of b a go to v b which is not zero i don't think so right it is not zero b is moving to the left plus uh, r omega this is what i'm going to use omega cross e b a now look at the direction v a is to the right v a i v b is to the left the negative again i'm solving it explicitly so i know the direction already r times omega is going to rotate this way right he goes out of the page cross with upward b to a and then to the left so i is going to be negative magnitudes are omega so we have v a equal to negative v b minus r omega and so we move v b to the left so v a plus v b is negative r omega so omega is v a plus v b over minus r uh let's see this is gonna give you we know v a is pi over 3 v b pi over 3 v b plus v b is 3 over 3 v b over minus r so this is going to be 8 over 3 vb divided by negative r right? so times 1 over negative r so that's going to be vb over negative r okay so that's another important information actually we can do square too because that's what we need um omega square you know you have i omega square one half i omega square we can also square it so a times eight is 64 8 by 9 okay, let me double check a times eight okay it is 64 uh the b over r square minus one times minus one is one okay so that's a good information so in this case we also do v a square is going to be 25 over 9 v b square yep. and we do all the hard work this is the main meat of the problem the rest is just construct the energy thing t1 plus u equal t2 like t1 is zero the system is released from rest and let's see the potential energy is a is going to go here to here right so the difference in the height is going to be the um potential energy i think we just plug in the right so this this height is going to be the difference in the height that's going to be put in for the potential energy let's put it the h here it's going to be uh m of a of the bar the disk whatever that is m g h and it's positive right because the bar is going down so everything if we go down you have positive for potential energy if you go up you have negative for potential energy you can see two the t2 is the main problem here we have first i put the translation of kinetic energy so one half m a v a square plus one half V B B square. Maybe this is a bit more room. Okay, and then plus one half 
uh, I well for rotational kinetic energy B doesn't rotate so we only care about A one half I A omega square and we know right we calculated above here V A is what twenty five and V B square. Let me actually copy the whole thing. Copy, paste. Oops. Okay. So let's replace VA square. Move it over here. Put it in here. Okay, that's VB, VA square. Okay, v B square, we keep this the same for I A and omega square. Let me note this stuff. Here, okay. For I A and omega square, let's see, I A is the cylinder. So, um, moment of inertia is just one half mv square. One half m a. R, so I see, R, this R is going to cancel out. Oops, this turns omega square, which is right here. See, that's the whole reason why I'm, I calculate the moment of the um, conservation of linear momentum and also the rotating vector first. Oops, I think this one has to be square, right? Yeah, that one has to be square. So this is omega square. Right? There's a reason for everything. Uh -huh. But like what 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 I normally do probably in the test first, you're gonna construct this first and then you figure out what's missing and then you go back and you construct these two equations and you just box the unknowns and you're done. Anyways, now we have one single equation. We know everything. Um, except VB, one equation, one unknown, should be straightforward. Equal VB square. I think in the test you need to do the rest, but I'm just going to do it. We have 25 over 18, and A plus MB over 2, plus MA over 4, so actually. R square, R square, I tell you it's going to cancel out. And then over 4 um, times 54 over 9. Yeah. 4 times 9 is 36. 54 is MA. Let's see. If you divide it by 2, so you can divide it by 4. So by 4, this is going to be 9. By 4, this one is going to be 1, 9, 4, and 2, 4. Uh, can you? 6. Yeah, 6. Right? Let me double check. Yeah, it is. Okay, so this one's going to be 16. And then, yeah, that's it. Right. I think it's going to be by 3. Anyway, okay, we got that. And then, uh, let's see. We can also, this time two is 18, this time two is 32. And then we can add an A together. This is going to be um, 57. Right? Seven. Good algebra. <laughs> oh man, so many algebra things to do. Uh, right. You can also do common denominator is this time nine time nine. So you're gonna have uh a plus nine and b. Imagine I got to draw. That's gonna be funny. Okay. Oh man. Okay. The sum of vb b square is m a v h uh, times 18 divided by 
pp7 ma plus 9 mb and like you can see the unit cancel out too like the unit ma here the unit cancel out so that's also another nice thing and um db only depend on g and h you also check the unit it, it also makes sense for the unit right this equal to yeah what's ma another thing let me look at that ma6 times g this time is in feet per second square 32 and h is 0 0.5 times 18 divided by 57 times ma is 6 plus 9 times mb is 10 It's gonna give you four. Um, what's the unit? I don't know. Fit square per second squared doesn't really matter. VB is gonna be square root of four. Gonna be two. This is fit per second. And what's the direction of VB, right? I solve it explicitly because I know VB is going to the left already. So VB is going to be to the left, and that's going to be the final answer.